Hello legends, in the last video I asked you to help me and I asked a question. Now, do I paint it? Yes or no? Comment section below. Do I paint this area white or do I leave it rustic and sheddy like? Well, some of you replied, some of you didn't. But at the end of the day, I thought to myself, well, I'll just give it a lick of paint. It's going to look better. There's no need to go overboard now, is there? Welcome you legends and helly heads and stick bangers and twizzle whistlers, subscribers and passers by. Welcome to this video on Heli Shed. Now it's a little bit different around here now, isn't it? It's all very, uh, all very inclusive, all very RGB, L, Q, B, T, Q plus, whatever it is, I'm not quite sure. I, I would have been better off in the 11th century, to be honest. So what did I end up doing? Well, I painted the walls and I created a bit of a wooden frame there to stick with the, uh, the theme of the heli shed and mounted the beautiful girls along the uh, uh, lattice, well it's not lattice work is it? Uh, ladder, is it a ladder? I'm not sure if it's a ladder. Uh, wooden prison bars, I don't know. But that thing that I've put on the wall there. Um, and it's working really good. And check this out. Ta da! They all glow up. Look at that. You know, they all glow. Which, uh, which is just really, really nice. <laughs> Look at that madness. Right, on with the video. On a serious note, it's not everyone's cup of tea, but I think it's slightly better. Uh, than I had before and uh, now I'm able to have the girls on the wall there and more importantly it's a useful and meaningful addition to the heli shed and enables me to service them properly. Mm. In the last video I said uh, send me a couple of videos and I'll send you some cups out. Well a few of you did, that's no longer, we're not doing that anymore, it's costing me a bloody fortune but for those of you who did send me a video I'm going to be using that on a consolidated video that I'll do with a bit of a commentary and so on. Your cups are en route, my boxes are now in. And so I'll be sending them out next week. Okay, on with the video. Now, in the last video, I introduced you to Rosie. Here is not Phoenix, but this is Rosie. Remember in the last video, which you can see up there, we announced that we would be building Rosie, which is a 700X donor machine to a 760, and that will be coming out in the next couple of videos. Now, as you saw there, Rosie is a 700X, just with uh, the frame, nothing else, and the intent is to turn her into a 760X. Well, guess what? That's now done, and I'm gonna save you about 12 videos of watching boring old me in fast forward time lapse videos of building a 700X into a 760X. <laughs> so, what do you need to turn a 700X into a 760X? Let's find out. A set of blades, three tail blades, triple blade tail setup, control rod, torque tube, boom. These three will come together as a package. 12 tooth pinion, front drive gear, 23 tooth, main blade control arms, control rod arms, canopy, canopy trim, button stop, landing gear, skid pipes, tail fin. Okay, let's give you a bottom line up front. If you've bought a 700X, you've got all of the equipment there that you can use to run a 760X. Unless you are a budding Tariq Al Sadi or Alan Shazbo or a super stick banger, you don't need any better servos, you don't need any better motor because it's exactly the same in the 760X. You certainly don't need um, a, better, uh, a better electronic speed controller. Um, with the 700X comes a 130 amp and peaks at 160 amp, so for sport flying that will be perfectly fine. However, my machine that I bought was just a frame. So these electronics have been purchased 
um, in addition to that frame. 490 kV motor, I'm gonna be running a V-Bar Neo with a Futaba six channel. The servos that I'm gonna be running, BK Hobby servos, high voltage. The ESC, however, in this case is a 160 amp, which peaks at 200 amps. And the reason why I have gone for this rather than 130 amp and buying that second hand, purely and simply is because the intent for this 760X is to go into a Black Shark fuselage, which is adds more weight and so forth. And the 130 amp, uh, you know, is perfectly fine. Like I said, I believe in it. I fly Eve on a 130 amp. And I'm not going to be flying the 760X any different to the way in which I fly Eve. But an opportunity came up to buy a 160 amp at a relatively very good price. And so, you know, I, I went for one for the 160 amp. The key thing is it is not an opto version. So it's got its normal 10 amp BEC. So I can use that for my backup power, etc. Now the Align T-Rex 700X, in this case at Helished Phoenix, is an outstanding helicopter. It's not the best 700 helicopter you can buy, not by a long shot, but you know what? You get value for money for it, and it's an easy way into the 700 size helicopter, especially if you buy it new. But of course, we've now turned Rosie from a 700X, God, this is take my head off. We've now turned Rosie from a 700X into a 760X, and she is significantly bigger. Let's uh, do a side-by-side -side comparison without trying to chop my head off this time. All right, here we are. We've now got Phoenix and Rosie alongside each other. And you know, Rosie is such a big helicopter that I'm having trouble getting her in the camera shot. Both helicopters are lined up uh, mast to mast, essentially, so exactly the same. And you can see here, the first thing that sticks out is how much bigger the blades are, clearly by about 60 mils. Other than that, the framework is exactly the same. We'll take the canopies off in a minute. It is a 700X frame. There is no difference to phoenix but as we come along the boom here and i think i'm going to be putting, be putting some red fluorescent tape on there like i've done with uh, phoenix i should do the same with rosie but as we come back we can see we've got the triple blade now at the back there whereas phoenix oh whoops phoenix you, you're not dressed properly my love don't worry little tickle little tickle there we go all over um it's Phoenix, she does like a tickle. Women have told everyone to just fuck off. <laughs> you can see that she's obviously got two blades, whereas Rosie has got three blades. And you know, I'll be honest with you. I think for a pod and boom, the 760X looks slightly out of, out of, out of proportion. It's got a, such a long, thin boom. I'm not sure I like it. Now, that is irrelevant whether I like it or not, because the intent for Rosie is for Rosie to go into a black shark frame. But when you ignore that and you look at the sort of scheme that we've got going on here, the red, the white, the blue, where I've tried to carry that through with the antenna mounts there, the white blades, etc. It looks fantastic, but as I said, you know, if you if you if you know pod and boom helicopters, you you'll just feel that this boom is just feels out of proportion. I think that's probably because it's so thin. If this boom was thicker, um, then I don't think it would look quite so out of proportion. But you know, that's why it's called a pod and boom. Right now, let's take their faces off. And let's have a quick look under the canopies. Here's the thing. I mentioned it in the equipment when I went through the various equipment. Everything that is in Rosie is the same as the 760X. The motor is the same. The ESC is 30 amps more, but you can very happily easily get away with a 130 amp. These are standard servos in Phoenix. These are uh, a line 820 series and the 825 uh, for the tail and um, some say these are far better than the 830s I would agree in Rosie we're using BK hobbies because of course we built up Rosie from just a frame but these are very good servos as well 
The point being is that if you've got a 700X and you're in a position where you want to upgrade your 700X rather than doing what I done, which was build it from scratch, then all of this equipment here, your ESC, your motor, your servos, your tail servo, all of this can be used, including your fly barless unit, of course, and your, your receiver. There's no need for you to change that out unless, of course, you are gonna be stick banging it all over the place. The frame is the same. Um, and uh, all the mountains are the same, etc. So you can very easily just upgrade your 700X to a 760X and fly a bigger bird if that was what you wanted to do. I mentioned in the video the difference for the pinion and for the front drive. Look, the 700X here has a 13 tooth pinion for the motor and a 22 tooth inside there for the front drive. And that is because of the size of the blades to ensure that the head speed has parity with the motor speed. But because the 760X is that much bigger, with the blades that much wider and longer, so we need to change the gear into a 12 tooth, and in the front drive here, down uh, up to a 23 teeth. And that will ensure that the head speed um, has parity with the motor, which translates through the boom, through the drive system, the rear matched to 23 teeth as well, which means that the tail authority is correct. And the way that's done is by increasing the ratio to about 9.3 by changing the motor pinion to 12.2. The triple blade gives the right sort of tail authority that is required for the 760X. So we've got the canopies in front of us. Now, the first thing to mention is this, and that is that the 700X, i.e. in this case Phoenix, uses the sort of Mark II version of the canopy. The Mark I version is exactly the same in shape as the 760, i.e. Rosie. And if we have a look at the 700X up on the wall, this is the original canopy here, never ever actually been flown. In fact, I was, you know, I couldn't wait to screw it against the wall purely and simply because, you know, it's awful. But, um, you know, I don't like that canopy at all. It's super flimsy, flimsy, flimsy. I mean, it's like paper, that. Um, so, uh, you know, I was very conscious of that. So as soon as these came out, I grabbed all of them straight away. You'll notice that I've put some metal grate in there. That's my thing. I like to do that. That's part of my, um, part of how I like to um, dress my helicopters. And likewise, I always use some metal mesh underneath the bottom there. Saves cables coming out and so on. And I'm not flying it hard enough and fast enough to worry about overheating. Even though this is taking up some airflow, the bottom line is air still goes in it. But this canopy is much more robust than that canopy. Uh, it's a lot more solid, as anyone who has got one of these canopies can attest to. But sadly, the 760X Rose's canopy is essentially exactly the same as the 700X canopy. Yes, it's got a different paint job, but it is the same canopy, same dimensions, and I'm afraid, yes, flimsy flimsy like a piece of paper so there are some things you can do i mean look at that so the first thing you can do is you can get some glass fiber or carbon fiber and you can start lining the inside of your canopies now jeff over at west hobbies rc has recently done a great video on that you can see that in the top right hand corner go along and have a look at it it's something that i'm certainly going to be doing with my canopies but for the moment, I can't do that. I haven't got the equipment, etc. And to be perfectly honest with you, I can't even do my shoelaces up half the time, let alone fiberglass or use carbon fiber. So I'm gonna to have to research that. You can help yourself. Look, it's super, super flimsy. I've just put a piece of tape along here, sponge tape. I think in the, in the hobby, they call it the moose tape. But you know, I just got this from Amazon. I think it was a pound a line. It's soft sponge. It's like a foam tape with, uh, with uh, sticky on the back there and I've just taken that all along the edge here on both sides and uh, and that has made this a little bit more robust and less likely to crack and so on so you can do that of course I've put my metal grates in here I've used hot glue for those two but the key thing is that has also given it some stability there so look, in summary, the canopy isn't that great. You can see it's been cut weird. It's not level. Um, and, and it's, you know, it's very typically yesteryear quality of a line. Certainly not the sort of quality 
that they now produce with the TB series, having now left the Dominator series, the X series behind. Right, let's have some final words. So to finish off, the Align T-Rex 700X is a good value for money, 700 size helicopter. It's got pedigree, the parts aren't going to break the bank and you can break in with a brand new uh, model for a relatively good price. There are plenty of these going for second hand. It is a good, stable platform. It's not the very best out there when it comes to performance and so on, but you can get a complete package almost ready to fly for relatively little money, particularly second or third hand. It's a fantastic machine and I think you all know I'm a great fan of the Align T-Rex 700X, the Dominator. Its big sister is the 760X, not the 800X, there is no 800X, and the 800E that you can buy is actually based on a 700L V2 frame. Work that one out. Well, why, why is it not called 800LV3? So the biggest dominator that you can fly in the Align series is the 760X. And I'd like to say thank you to Align for allowing us to buy a relatively cheap upgrade package and upgrade the 700X to the 760X, which enables us to grow further in our journey of flying radio control helicopters because the 760X flies completely different to a 700X. It's that much bigger, has that much more hang time, and gives you that much more thinking time, believe it or not. Oh yes. Rosie is now complete. She is electronically set up and she is ready for her maiden flight. We promised that young lady that this is dedicated to that we would fly Rosie on the 10th of February, which is next Saturday, and come rain, shine, lightning, heavy winds, the coming of Jesus Christ, we are flying on that day. No cheating, no doing it on the day before because it's lovely and sunny and then upload it on the Saturday. No, 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 not a heli shed. No, we will fly it on the 10th of February and I will upload that video on Saturday the 10th of February in the evening on Rosie's birthday. There's only two things left to do for Rosie. The first is to give her her heli shed sticker, yes. Welcome to the hangar, Rosie. And the second thing is to fly her. And we'll be doing that next Saturday, dedicated to that young lady in real life who follows this channel. The least we could do is dedicate this beautiful machine to that young lady. And Rosie the helicopter is going flying next Saturday on the 10th of February. Happy Sobran Day to those who know what it means. And for those of you who don't, well, it's all about the journey. Until the next video, take care. Bye-bye.